Today, we are not only going to see how five stage 5 CVD patients avoided dialysis, we are also going to find ways to apply these findings to you to lower your creatinine levels fast. Gathering here, the number of patients with end-stage renal disease in need for dialysis is growing annually around the world, and treatments are getting more expensive. There is the need for an alternative, one that doesn't involve someone passing away and leaving you with one of their organs. These researchers may have found one. In this study, Five end-stage kidney disease patients were able to avoid the need for dialysis successfully for up to 10 months. This is why I'm here today. I want to spread the awareness for kidney disease and for the treatments that may save people from dialysis. But you know, outside of the small world of CKD, very few people know about the dangers of kidney disease. This is why I want you to share this video now with anyone you know who is suffering from kidney problems, diabetes or high blood pressure. Question: What is the dialysis-free protocol? So let's take a look now at what researchers call the dialysis-free protocol. This is a three-step plan that was effectively used to stop the need for dialysis. Thanks to it, doctors were able to assist end-stage renal disease patients in greatly delaying or even completely avoiding dialysis. Some patients were able to be dialysis-free for months, and some of them who were waiting for a transplant were able to never undergo dialysis at all. You're gonna like it. And most of what these researchers found out may also be relevant for CKD patients in stage 3 and 4 of CKD. These findings may help you stabilize your kidney function and lower your creatinine levels. To achieve this, scientists employed an extremely effective 3 step plan aimed at completely removing nitrogenous waste outside of the kidneys. So, question What is nitrogenous waste? And why removing it is key to protect the kidneys. Removing nitrogenous waste from the human body is the main job the kidneys do. You may have heard about nitrogenous waste called ammonia, urea, uric acid, and creatinine. The buildup of these toxins is responsible for most of the symptoms of kidney disease and the main reason why people are put on dialysis. When these substances build up in the body because the kidneys cannot remove them anymore, people will see symptoms such as fatigue, swelling, troubled breathing, nausea, and many other problems caused by kidney disease. Now, finding ways to remove these substances when the kidneys cannot without the use of dialysis is also a valid strategy to protect the kidneys from the damage these toxins will cause them. And there are only two ways this course can leave the body, through urine and through feces. And that's what it takes for someone with CAD stage 5 to be dialysis free. Removing these toxins through the gut instead that through the kidneys while greatly decreasing the production of said toxins. Question, how can we employ our gut to get rid of this dangerous course? The answer is using a substance that binds to toxins in the gut, giving the body the possibility of excreting them through the feces. And this is the first step in the dialysis-free protocol. Now, there are various substances that can do this. Acacia fiber is one of the most powerful detoxifiers and it has the added benefit of being a probiotic. Psyllium husk is also a detoxifier, but is not as powerful as AST-120, a specific medication for those with CKD and activated charcoal. Now, all these four remedies may be used to bind and remove uremic toxins in the gut, but what they use in the dialysis-free protocol is activated charcoal. That was the first step to achieve freedom from dialysis for these five patients. It is a powerful detoxifier and in this three-step protocol, it was used as a form of intestinal dialysis. 
Researchers believe that activated charcoal is especially effective at removing toxins derived from urea, uremic toxins and phosphorus. And activated charcoal definitely works against symptoms of CED at the point that it was also used in stage 3 and 4 patients to slow down the progression of the disease. Question? How can you use activated charcoal to slow down CKD? Now, what we must know about activated charcoal is that it's a really potent detoxifier. People use it every day in small dosages as a home remedy against bloating, gas, diarrhea and also to get their teeth wider. Emergency room doctors, on the other hand, use it to treat poisoning. And people with kidney disease in stage 3 and 4 may use it to lower their phosphorus levels and to help heart health. This is what a study published in the Journal of Nephrology found out. In this study conducted in Japan, small doses of activated charcoal 0.6 to 1.2 grams were administered three times a day at meals. Patients were found to be way less likely to develop high phosphorus levels and, even more important, vascular calcification. Vascular calcification are mineral deposits on the walls of your arteries and veins. It's a very serious and very common issue and this remedy can help. Now, in the 5 kidney disease patients from the dialysis free protocol, the dose of activated charcoal use was higher, 15 grams 2 to 3 times a day. Never take that dose without the supervision of a doctor. An activated charcoal may be already prescribed in those with kidney disease in stage 3 and 4 for its main benefits. It can be used to delay dialysis for years. A special type of activated charcoal called AST120 is actually being prescribed to kidney disease patients in stage 3 and 4 in the Philippines, Japan, Taiwan and South Korea. Researchers from South Korea in particular have demonstrated that AST120 can delay dialysis up to 4 years in pre-dialysis patients. Now, AS120, also known as cremazine, is something hugely important because it's one of the few medicines available for prescription today, specifically aimed at slowing down kidney disease. But it was never approved in the US, not even studied in depth. So you are probably wondering why these powerful treatments are never studied in the US. Question, why studies on how to avoid dialysis always come from outside the US? Okay guys, in one of my videos, someone in the comment section complained that all my studies are from China. I was almost going to report that comment because, you know, calling all Asian people Chinese is racist. But then I decided to take the high road. I'm not Chinese, by the way. I'm from the Philippines and I was raised in Italy. <laughs> yeah, that's why I have this accent. And yes, many of the studies I talk about in my videos are not from the US. Many are from Europe. They also do a lot of good science here in Italy and some are from Japan, Korea, China obviously and some are from certain Middle Eastern countries even. So what's the difference between all these countries and the US? Well, in all these countries, the government used tax money to pay for health care and that's a huge difference because you know, if the government has your health as a target, Things are very different for you as a patient. Dialysis is costly and finding ways to reduce the number of people ending up in dialysis can save the government a huge amount of money. That's why you can access AST120, a special version of activated charcoal, if you are in many Asian countries. That's why you always see CKD patients in most European countries following a diet created and studied to avoid dialysis. All of these studies are, at least in part, receiving government funds and that can make a big difference. On the other hand, patients in the US are still being told today to just keep eating steak and wait for dialysis. And if that isn't bad enough for the patients, there's also a study that's being hugely delayed by the fact that they don't care if you end up on dialysis. A study that's being conducted in the US and that could put an end to the world dialysis. Yeah, I'm talking about the artificial kidney. You know what's keeping the Kidney Project team from actually testing the artificial kidney on dialysis patients? The same reason why they have to sell t-shirts and ask for donations to keep going on. Money. Yeah, it's just that.
they need 10 million dollars to start testing on humans. And you may think that 10 million dollars is a big sum, but if you put it in perspective, it's not really. Any billionaire of the world could end Sigidi in the bit of an eye and be remembered forever as the guy who stopped one of the world's deadliest diseases. And the prize would be basically pocket change for them. But they choose not to. All they care about is buying Twitter and losing $200 billion in the process. So why not the artificial kidney? Because that's not gonna make them any money. The dialysis industry, on the other hand, makes a lot of money and they are going to keep it that way if they can. So that's why I want you to share this video and to raise the awareness. So you know now why the dialysis free protocol was tested in Asia and not in the US. But it doesn't mean it is not a very meaningful study. Back to the dialysis free protocol, we have seen the first step to avoid dialysis, taking a powerful detoxifier to get rid of part of the toxins through the gut. The second step is making sure that the gut is 100% healthy and efficient. Because if you want your gut to do some of the work the kidneys usually do, you should better make sure it's in tip-top shape. And what they use to achieve this is a prebiotic that's also a laxative. According to studies, prebiotics are extremely powerful when it comes to lowering creatinine levels in all the stages. They can effectively improve probiotic count, the good bacteria in the gut. They can basically consume uremic toxins protecting the kidneys. To achieve this, the second step in the dialysis free study is a prebiotic called lactulose. Lactulose 30 milliliters or 20 grams three times per day in order to change the gastrointestinal microflora to help bacteria in reduction of nitrogenous waste. Lactulose is a synthetic sugar used to treat constipation. It is broken down in the colon into products that remove uremic toxins. The result is a huge drop in creatinine levels. And while this is really helpful, it's worth noticing that lactulose is a prescription medication, at least in some countries. A good alternative would be to use acacia fiber or another form of soluble fiber to both detox and help gut health. Acacia fiber is very powerful and it can be used safely by patients in all the stages of kidney disease. I'll talk more in depth about it in my video up here, watch it now to know more. Ok, time now to see the last, maybe the most important step to avoid dialysis. This is something I recommend to anyone with kidney problems actually. Now to avoid dialysis, these patients needed three things. First, to get rid of nitrogenous waste with a powerful detoxifier, activated charcoal. Second, a prebiotic to help gut health. Third, a diet that greatly lowers the nitrogenous waste production in the body. Because that's what makes kidney disease progress. And what's the number one cause of nitrogenous waste formation? Protein intake. Guys, saying that this step is key in all the stages of CKD to slow down the progression of the disease is an understatement. The low protein diet or LPD treatment has been used on thousands of CKD patients and science has pretty solid data on it. Modern guidelines consider this diet the cornerstone of the treatment for kidney disease. And while until some time ago the low protein diet was controversial for patients with diabetes, Today, we know that even people who need to keep their blood sugar level under control can protect their kidneys eating a low protein diet. I've explained this from a more practical point of view in my video up here and this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless.